Hey, it's Chris from CrispyCancer.com, and I'm here with my friend Elaine Gibson. We are at the Cure to Cancer Conference in San Diego. Uh, this is the last day of the event, and I'm kind of bummed because it's been really amazing. It has been, the speakers are phenomenal. The people here, there's so much love and energy and just like great vibes, right? Uh, and so uh, Elaine has an amazing healing story. And I asked her to share it, and she said yes, so here we are. So, Elaine, thanks for doing this. Well, thank you, Chris, and thanks for all the work that you do to bring all of this incredible information to the people that really need it and, and everybody. But um, I have beaten stage four non-Hodgkin's lymphoma without traditional protocol. Stage four. Stage four. Everybody said, you're not going to beat it. I heard that was serious. That's kind of serious. That's like a big deal. <laughs> and um, the most difficult thing about that was that it was a recurrence. And briefly in 2001, I had a, in 2001 and 2002, I had a six month quickie, uh, um, early stage uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. I, uh, How did they treat that? Well, interestingly, I did not go to conventional um, treatments. Mm -hmm. And I um, went to Mexico, and I found a treatment that I could trust. Mm -hmm. And Coronas. <laughs> and in um, six months, I was declared clean. Yay! Yeah. You're done. Okay. So I was followed by my oncologist, and I uh, was told after five years, Elaine, you're done. No more. No more scans, no more nothing. Great. Doesn't get better than that. Well, 18 months later, my husband and I went to the Galapagos Islands on an amazing trip. Came back, and I wasn't feeling well. Mm. And I had pain just all around here, and it felt like it felt like it was a parasite. I was in Ecuador. Of course, you have a parasite. You know, and it was moving all around, and fast forward two months later, and whoops, surprise, I get a call from my oncologist. Elaine, sorry, you are in stage four non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Really? I thought you told me it wasn't coming back. So, and how long had it been bef between that time and your last scan? Or test 18 or something. months when she said I was done. Oh, so you, so you did have a test at five years or something? At five years, so I had my scans okay. and everything, and then she yeah. said, you're done, it's not coming back. Have a nice yeah. life. Okay. Whoops. I would have assumed the same thing. Exactly. Now, can I ask you this before you continue? Um, did you make a whole lot of changes in your life, at, you know, the first go-round? Great question. And, and second part two is, and did you stick with them uh -huh. or not? The operative question, yeah. did you stick with it? Yeah. I gave up sugar. Yeah. I was told no sugar. So I was, that was okay, and I um, wasn't a big deal. But it was it came and, and went so quickly that I never identified with it. It never really yeah. became part of me. Yeah, yeah. And the answer is I probably ate better. Mm -hmm. But, if, you know, the old adage, if, you know, if I knew then what I know now, and I didn't, so it did come back, and it came back with a vengeance, and I still didn't have any more knowledge. Yeah. So you were treated, and it worked, mm -hmm. um, but you didn't make a whole lot of life changes. But nobody okay. told me. I had yeah. no idea. Right. Which is pretty normal. Right. Especially yeah. then, 2001, 2002. Mm -hmm. so the same time? Well, okay. You were That was before me. I was 2003. Right. So I... Um, I got my diagnosis again, and I went back to Mexico. This time I went for three weeks, and I did have low-dose chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. And Chris, I'm one of those people... Was that IPT? IPT. Okay. That's insulin potentiation yeah. therapy. For anybody that doesn't know what that is, they give you very low-dose chemotherapy with insulin, and it's, a, it's very tolerable. It's a different method. Um, most people really don't even know they're on chemotherapy right. with that method. And there's, there's controversy about it, but um, there's also a lot of success stories behind low-dose chemotherapy uh, with insulin. And the insulin basically primes your cancer cells 
to open up and receive the chemotherapy. Exactly. So. Okay, so you did that. I did that. And I knew that I knew I really felt that I knew that I needed that. And maybe it's because I was still tied to traditional medicine and couldn't let go of it all. Mm-hmm. Now the interesting thing was Wait, wait, let me interrupt. Because the first treatment you did, mm -hmm. what was that what did that entail? The six months? Well, was in, it, it was two weeks at this hospital in Mexico. I had IPT, low-dose chemotherapy. Okay. I had hyperbaric chambers. I had rectal um, ozone encephalation. Mm -hmm. I had massage and, and colonics and, and all that. So you basically had the gamut. The I al had alternative the gamut. therapy, gamut, IVs, a lot of yep. vitamin IVs, the yep. whole thing. Okay, cool. And my body responded really well. Yeah. And so I went back to them. Mm-hmm. Well, the interesting thing was, when I came back, I just, I mean, I was in deep trouble, and I knew it. So I found a center near me in the Washington, D.C. area. It's called Natural Horizons Wellness Center, because mm -hmm. I Googled IPT in Washington, D.C. I couldn't go move into Mexico, and I found this wonderful center, and I went there. And interestingly, they had all the, the modalities, they had all the protocols, and they did something they call a Greek test. Yes. Which identified the chemotherapy agents that would work with me. This is a test that really every oncologist should use, huh. but most don't. Right. But th there's another name for it too though, isn't it called the chemosensitivity test? Right. Yeah, and so basically it's a blood test. It's a blood they test. They send it to Greece, to a laboratory there, right? And yes, they, and they tested against every chemotherapy agent there is to see what you would respond to. Yeah, instead of just trial and error, like let's try you on this chemo and see if it works. Right. You know, so for anyone that's doing chemotherapy, it really would be helpful to know which ones act, your body actually responds to. And demand it. Exactly. If you're demand that proactive, demand yeah. it. Well, guess what? Not one of the four drugs that traditional medicine protocol for what I had was what came back. So I was now on a custom um, treatment plan for myself. Still doing IPT? With the IPT. Okay. Right. Now it's interesting, it also found out that I had a gene out of whack. Okay. I now take an $18 a month compounded medication and it's totally fine. And I learned when I went online that 89% of all people with blood cancers have this gene out of whack. Hmm. Seriously? What's the gene? Um, MD1, I believe. Okay. MDR1, MD1. And um, how, do, how, do you, how do we not do that here? I just don't get it. But we won't go there now. <laughs> Yes, I'm, I'm continually confounded by I am the confounded. Uh, what a great, conventional, what a great conventional approach to medicine. So I, you know, I had it all again, and it was at this time that I discovered alkaline antioxidant water. Okay. Because we need to be filled with oxygen. Cancer is an anaerobic cell. It cannot live in the presence of oxygen. And my body really started to respond. And in less than six months, I was covered with disease from here to here. Mm. I mean, my How skin, many spots did, did, uh, it did was, they count? It was all over. You couldn't. It was all over. Just like it did not 30, get 40, into organs. It was just a, a line wow. here. It looked like a Christmas tree. Wow. And um, in six months, it was about 85% clean with the, with the right treatments and the, the um, addition of the anti- uh, Antioxidant, alkaline water, everything like trunk, 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 just one little spot. And 18 months later, I was home free again. Was I? <laughs> <laughs> Still didn't do a whole lot of things different. Now I'd given up dairy, I'd given up sugar totally, I'd given up wheat. And um, I thought it was pretty cool, but when I got my PET scan back in December, 2009 that said I was clean again I was really excited for about 10 minutes and then it was but it came back once yeah now what because I was on a journey to learn so 
literally. Well, like you learned that lesson, right? I did. That treatments typically do not cure you. Exactly. They may improve your condition temporarily, mm -hmm. but you have to address the underlying cause of the problem. Exactly. And so you said you got down on Absolutely, your knees. Absolutely, I did. And I <laughs> look, I got on my knees and I looked up and I said, God, I know I'm not going to die. Just tell me what you want me to learn. This beautiful um, needlepoint, beautiful needlepoint rug in my living room. And I call it my magic carpet now. <laughs> and I went on a journey to learn. And, yeah. And that's what I did because um, until that shift, I'm kind of understanding that the treatments that we get that will ex that will help us get to that point keep us going long enough to discover yeah. that it's all about the immune system. Right. So I was pretty quiet for about two years, you know, took care of myself, rested. I was exhausted. It, it's mm -hmm. a lot of work curing that, you know. Yes. It was exhausting. And about two years later, I discovered raw foods. Mm -hmm. I discovered Lisa Wilson, who owns the Raw Food Institute, and she was coming to Washington, D.C. for a seven-day full immersion program. I was in like that. You know, Chris, it's really people like you who do all this incredible work. You travel, you speak, you take the time to bring your camera across the country so you can bring this information. <laughs> you can bring this information to the people that are hungry for it. No pun intended. Yeah. They are hungry for it and deserve it. Yeah. Because they deserve to know what the options are. Yeah. Well, look, I, I do it because I lived it, right? I was desperate for information in 2004. I was desperate to find real people that had mm -hmm. healed. And I found a few, you know, there, there weren't that many out there. You know, the internet was very different in 2004, oh, yes. 10 years ago. It really was. It was very different. And most of the information I found was not on the internet. It was in books mm -hmm. and some audio tapes, yes. like cassettes. <laughs> sounds weird, but 10 years ago, cassettes, you know? Right. And, and so <laughs> that really, um, and I just remember how encouraged and how powerful and how important it was to me to, to find people that had healed cancer, you know, and... Uh, I mean, I just needed it so bad, and that's why I do this. I mean, that's why I want to share your story. That's why I'm constantly sharing more stories, you know. I understand the value in one story, because sometimes it just takes one story to, to completely change the direction of your life. Yes. But when we can get 50, 100, 200, 500 stories together, then all of a sudden you have something that the world cannot ignore, you know. If they do, it just makes them look ridiculous, yes. right? It's like the elephant in the room. Yes. Hello, yeah, people are healing big. themselves. You know, they're healing cancer, and they're not using conventional methods. You know, it's time to pay attention. It is time to pay attention. And if I could leave the, the wonderful people that are watching us today um, with a piece of clarity, um, I find that when the light bulb goes off, that's when the magic happens because that's when the, the actions and the right things to do and the positive things to do are focused on. And when there's confusion, then that's where paralysis comes in and we don't know what to do. So yeah. I believe with all my heart that a high alkaline, oxygen rich lifestyle is the foundation of health. So every day I wake up and I say, how can I get more alkalinity and oxygen to my body and into my life. And that's the only question I ever ask. Because once I'm that clear, the answers come. So it's yeah. no longer, oh my goodness, I don't know what to do, and what do I do here, what do I do there? How do I get more alkalinity and oxygen to my lifestyle consistently? Yeah. And that clarity creates a focus and an energy that creates miracles. You know, it's, it's really neat that you said that because it reminds me of, of my approach and my attitude, which was very similar, which was, uh, how can I overdose on nutrition? <laughs> I love that okay. idea. <laughs> you know, like, I'm, I need to, this is like, I've got to do it, right? I want to overdose on nutrition. I want to get as much in my body as I can. And 
And it's, it's, it's the same basic <laughs> attitude yes. and strategy. And when you, when that's your plan, then you're like, okay, uh, I can't do it with a Wendy's double cheeseburger. No, I can't. <laughs> you know? I need tons of juice. Yes. Tons of uh, vegetable juice. I need tons of food from the earth. I need fruits and vegetables yes. in large quantities. And again, you know, we did a lot of the same kind of stuff. Of course we did. The common threads are what's so important. And even though you might hear one person, at, you know, at a conference, you hear so many opinions, right? And I've had this conversation with a lot of people sidebarring. Um, they're like, I don't, you know, somebody said this and somebody else said that. And, you know, I, I, who's right? It's really important to focus on the common threads, okay? Because if we talked at length, we'd probably have some differences of opinion. Exactly. In fact, exactly. I have a lot of carrot juice, which has a lot right. of sugar, and you right. didn't, okay? Right. exactly. But the point is, is you focus on the common threads and, and learn from everyone. Take in what everyone has to say, roll it around in your head, right? Absolutely. And stew on it and pull out what you find that makes the most sense, those exactly. common threads. Exactly. It's great. It's, it's so true and it's so important. But find clarity with whatever works for you. And get in the game, as we like to say in our house. Game on. It's game time. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. I have been known to put my snow boots on at 5.30 in the morning. Thank goodness I live a mile from Whole Foods. <laughs> go up there. Yeah, right. That must be nice. Because I'm out of cucumbers. Mm -hmm. I have been known to do that. Oh, walk to Whole Foods? In the snow? Uh, sometimes. Uphill both ways? Sometimes. <laughs> it's pretty... But I have it's been great. known to do that. Yeah. My husband goes, where are you going? I don't have any cucumbers. You lame. Oh, yeah. It's 5.30. It's snowing. I don't care. I need them. So yeah, most no, of the I'll time I drive, them. but... Hey, I'll, I do the same thing. If it's like about to be lunchtime and I realize like I'm, if I'm making a smoothie and I'm out of berries, I'll, I'm like, well, I've got to drop what I'm doing and go drive and buy some berries and bring them home and eat exactly. them. You know, it's like, yeah, I mean, but that's just the attitude that you have yeah. when you're, when, when your health is a priority, when your diet is a priority, when nutrition is like a, a the foundation you know, of mm -hmm. health, when you understand that, then really, you don't really want to make any exceptions. And you laugh about it. Yeah. Because you're so grateful for yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's gratitude's like, a big deal. Yeah, it's like, I love to eat health food. I love it. Mm -hmm. I will go out of my way to eat it, yes. you know, so. Yeah. Well, thank you again for everything you do. You just bring so much amazing you're welcome. information. I love doing it. I love to, to everybody. I love it. People, I love doing this. I love sharing stories like Elaine's. Thank you. Thank you. So glad to have met you. So yes, glad we're on the same way. team. Yes, Pushing, spreading the message of health and healing and hope. I think the, the, the most valuable hope and true sincere hope is that the body can heal. Yes. And, um, and I hope you're I have to use the word hope again. That's right. It's I there. hope you can uh, start to see that too. So thank you for watching this. Please share this. Absolutely. Share this. Share her awesome story. Share this video. And subscribe to my channel. And make sure you check out chrisbeatcancer.com for tons of information on nutrition, natural cancer therapies, and a lot more amazing survivor stories just like Elaine's. People that have healed. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.